Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with better insights for a healthier workplace and a healthier life. Today we're going to be talking about uh, reopening. A lot of focus on that today and certainly one of the challenges for many different businesses is thinking about this and how to do it safely for the benefit of uh, your employees uh, and indeed your customers. And it's not simple. So the good news is uh, that together with uh, my colleague uh, and friend, Fred Goldstein, we've uh, introduced a course that's uh, going to be published this week uh, that is available for people to take. It's an introductory course. It's really the foundation to uh, thinking about this. But before we get into the details of that, I wanted to talk about some of the things that have already tried or uh, people are struggling with um, that give you a good insight into the challenges that you might face in your workplace to reopen it and do so safely uh, and effectively. And I personally attended um, the celebration of life of a friend of mine uh, who died uh, just recently. And whilst we got together and essentially described this as a, a poor version of a funeral, it had some positives, let's be frank. I was able to attend something that I would not have been able to attend otherwise. Uh, just simply because it was not in this country. Um, but I got to connect with old friends, so uh, Zoom funerals uh, are a thing now, and I know that some people have already had some of those experiences. But I did get to connect, and that was a good thing. But as one of the participants said, <clears throat> when we asked each other what we were going to do, the first thing we were going to do when things reopened, um, his comment was that he was going to attend his friend's uh, grave and uh, you know any kind of service that was uh, held, even if he had to stand 399 yards away. And I think that's the thing. Even if we're not physically close together, um, we still desire that sort of human connection. And this interaction over video is imperfect. It's better than nothing for sure, but it's not what we're seeking as human beings for closure, or even as another friend of mine who had to essentially, I want to say cancel the wedding, she did go ahead and get married, but it was a very solitary affair that uh, took place, I think, on a rooftop based on the pictures that I saw. And I know that that would have been disappointing uh, from an experience standpoint, but that's what they got to do, and hopefully at some point they'll get to celebrate. But it leads to the discussion about the impact and some of the reasons why funerals uh, and indeed weddings are bad ideas um, from a reopening standpoint. Because it gets lots of people together, they spend a lot of time with each other and tend to be in close proximity, and they're talking and talking in the same way as coughing, although not as much or not as much as sneezing, spreads the virus. So if you happen to be a carrier, either symptomatic, so you have symptoms or you don't have symptoms, you are spreading the disease by talking. So getting together uh, in an enclosed environment is a very poor circumstance and tends to increase the spread. When you think about that from a business standpoint, this lends itself to some of the things that we need to think about. And there's been a lot of thought uh, from folks thinking about which businesses we need to open. <clears throat> Lots of people can disagree. Certainly supermarkets are uh, in the category of high importance, need to be open, in fact have been uh, open certainly in my state and in, in the United States. Uh, for people to access, but with specific restrictions. But they tend to be not as risky because we don't spend long periods of time. We certainly don't interact, certainly my experience in the supermarket, even pre-COVID-19, I wasn't having regular chats unless I met somebody that I knew. Um, for the employees that are in there, it's a different risk. And that's one of the things that you've got to think about when you open your facility. You've got to think about a different risk for your employees versus for your customers. So the customers come in, buy their shopping, but they're not staying there for an extended period of time. And we know that exposure, quantity of virus and the time of exposure is highly significant in terms of the likelihood that you will uh, suffer or succumb to COVID-19 as a disease. 
That's also true when you think about a business uh, experience and when you're putting employees in that circumstance, the risk for them is different to the customers who maybe come in and thinking about that in terms of how you mitigate that as best as possible. And we've really got to take all of these things into account. But then you separate out all of the industries and this is part of our sort of coursework is thinking about different industries in different ways. So uh, when you think about an educational establishment versus a regular business versus a healthcare facility, all of these things have different parameters that you've got to think about and consider and incorporate into um, the process and the policies and procedures that you put together for opening so that you do so safely uh, for your employees and safely for your customers. But take that one step further as you think about um, uh, different businesses. And one of the things that I've seen is, you know, what are the businesses that we focus on last? And um, one of the examples was gyms. And I, I'm sure that all the gym owners are going to say, well, we want to open, we need to open. Certainly my gym needs uh, to open. And I know that the people that are part of that are struggling uh, with the fact, and sure, we're doing Zoom exercise classes, and you know, Nike has done a, a great um, service to the community by making its premium uh, offerings available for free, and you know, I applaud that, um, but it's still not the same as going there in person. Does that mean to say that gyms can't open uh, and be part of the opening? I don't think that's true. I think you th approach it differently. So. To be uh, safe in a gym requires different thinking because what happens is lots of different people come together and they spend an extended period of time. They said the same thing about cafes. So cafes are extraordinarily important. Think about this from a Starbucks. It's a sort of native part of human uh, nature to get together for coffee. Starbucks is the sort of, you know, the anchor point in many places and people go, even if they don't spend extended time, um, some do, and it brings all these people together and you know introduces exposure. So mitigating that will be part of the uh, process that's necessary for gyms, um, for uh, cafes. So it's not that you can't open, you just have to think about this differently and how you approach it. So maybe you change the workflow. You might have to move your gym around, move the equipment, maybe you have to take some equipment out um, so that people are not as close together, number one. Certainly have to think about ventilation. And one of the things that we've seen very clearly is open air. Flow of open air is uh, absolutely beneficial. And I know that creates problems from an environmental standpoint for temperature, humidity, and so forth. And it depends on where you are in the United States or, or even in your country and what the weather's like. But finding methods to do that so that we can open these things up um, perhaps staging and maybe treating the participants or grouping them differently so that people that are at risk or at additional risk come in or have special times and there's a reduced number of people. So lots of ways of thinking about this, but here's what I would tell you. I think you need expert help. You need somebody to help guide you through this process, even if you think you've got all the answers, and I'm sure as uh, anything. I know that I don't have all of the answers, but I spend a lot of time thinking about this and understanding how to apply the latest knowledge and science to the way that we reopen uh, the country, open up educational institutions. And what you need is to think about it in your individual circumstances. And I would suggest you at least have some counsel, even if it's a minimal amount, somebody to sound your ideas off so that you get validation uh, and surety that you're thinking about all of these things. Um, and that's one of the things that we'll be providing. So we're excited about that. Um, and we'll continue to sort of promote and talk about uh, the various issues that we come across. Um, but the good news is I think we can. We're highly resilient. There will be solutions to these things. Some of them will be um, uh, suboptimal in terms of human experience, but we're going to do the best that we can and improve it as much as possible. I'm Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here for better and healthier uh, openings of workplaces um, and improvements in your health and life and fitness.